friends and welcome back to my channel my name is kate we are wrapping up the bond star sampler so long today i'm going to go into the stitching block number 19 and 20. so these are the last two blocks the reason why i'm sewing it together is because they they are super tiny and they are um easy to put together it's just a few steps and you're done and block number 19 is the mill, mill wheels block. So if you remember the elongated flying geese that we did on block number one, that one that has like 50,000 half square triangles, like literally it feels like I was sewing half square triangles forever. So the elongated, um, Flying geese is what we're repeating in this super tiny block. So that's the only intricate part. If you are a beginner, you just have to be on your A games. It is nothing on that you cannot accomplish with this block. And then block number 20 is the crisscross block. It's the most, it's kind of like a granny square block, a mini version of it. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing block number 19 and block number 20. These are the last two blocks in the entire quilt. So now what I'm going to do is start assembling the quilt. And that's the part that is gonna be a little bit more, um, I don't think, I wouldn't say it's tricky because the reason why I have to be, I have to pay a little bit of attention is because all of my blocks are literally, they are directional because I did a lot of fuzzy cutting in within my blocks. So I just have to like make sure they're standing upright when I'm sewing them. Other than that, I, this is the easy part is putting it together and I will take you along with me when I'm putting it together. So if you want to see me put it together, comment down below and let me know. Um, but I'll still do it anyway. <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to show you what they look like. This is block number 19. I have already made this square in the square ahead of time because it's what we've been doing this whole time. It's uh, just, you know, square in the square, done. And then this one right here, this is the entire block that we're sewing right now. So let me sew block number 19 and then we'll come back and we will sew block number 20 and then we will wrap it up, right? We will be done. <sighs> I am excited. Yes, I am. So let's get sewing. First thing first with this block, we are going to do step number one, which is the um, flying geese. So we're going to make flying geese with this teeny tiny beet rectangle, okay? And we have to make two. So let me just, Make that. So here I have made this super tiny flying geese. This is the smallest flying geese I've ever made, guys. This is so small. So we just need to make two and I'm gonna put it right there. And the next step we have to do is the elongated uh, flying geese that I talked about at the beginning. So with this one, so we're gonna do, just like we did on block number one, we're going to put it like this, right? Like this, like we're gonna make flying geese, but we're going to put the long part facing down this way. And then we're going to sew from the uh, middle to the bottom right, just like that. Okay, and then we're going, I'm gonna snip this side so you can see. And then it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like this, like kind of like um, lopsided a little bit. And then we're going, I'm gonna press it open and then we're going to sew the other side, which is this right here. We're going to sew the other side just like this. We're going to sew this side the same way. So I think the white is kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to put my fab, I'm going to put this like this and I'm going to put the rectangle. I'm going to put it like 
this and I'm going to sew like this okay I'm putting my rectangle like this the longer part of the rectangle is going this way and the shorter part is going this way so you're going to put it on like this like that okay and then sew this way And this is what the, the geese is gonna look like, okay? I'm just gonna trim the top part and that's pretty much it. So this is what it's gonna look like and I need to make two. So I'm gonna make another one so you can see. So I'm making the second one like this. So. And I am pressing open with this. So I'm going to take the second one. I'm going to repeat the same thing we just did. I'm going to place it like this. And I'm going to sew with my seam pressed open. Okay. So I've made both of them. This is the one that I just sewed and this is the other one. This is both of them all done right now. The next step that we're doing is step number three, which is right here, and it's already done. It's a square and a square, easy process, done. So what we're doing now is assembling the block. We're going to assemble the block. We're gonna put our flying geese to the side, like this, and you're gonna see what it's, looking like, what it's gonna look like. And then we're gonna put this like this, and then we're going to put this guy over like that. And this is what our block is gonna kind of look like. Um, once it's all sewn together, it's gonna look a little bit <laughs> better than this. So I'm gonna sew my flying geese to the side and I'm gonna sew the elongated flying geese to the top. And block number 19 will be finished. And then with this one, you will need to make, after this, you'll make three more, so total four. And um, in the book, the book said to make two the same, one, the other two different. And I'm going to show you the rest of the three that I made, how I've sewn in the color, the fabric choices that I've chosen. So you can kind of see my method. And with this block, I'm definitely pressing my seam open rather. I am pressing everything open because the block are so small that if you don't, it will be bulky and it have bumps. Not that it won't have bumps anyway, but if you press it aside, it will have, it will have bumps. So at least with my experience anyway, but if you're doing this at home, you can still your seam however way you want, but um, I just, I'm sharing my experience with it. So you can kind of have an idea if you haven't gotten to this point yet. And if you've sewn this block, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, this is block number 19, all done. Just like that, guys, it's done. Block number 19 is completed and I'm going to add it to the four that we need to make for this, um, for this one. We need to make four of them and this is just one done and it will be all done before the video is over. We'll put it right there. We're gonna work on block number 20, which is the crisscross block. And this is what that block look like, okay? And it's kind of like a granny, a mini granny square. I hope I've got it right. For block number 20, this is all the pieces I need right here. Very teeny tiny. What we're doing now is assembling this block. It only requires one step. <laughs> so this is this. And right here, so we're going to do it like this like that like that with this c this is um piece b in the middle all right 
and then piece C, it wants us to cut it four times, um, make it like a quarter, quarter triangle. So what I'm gonna do is cut it going this way and then cut going this way with my rotary cutter and ruler, if I can find one. So I'm cutting diagonal twice. Cutting diagonal twice and like this. Okay, and then this is going to go here, like that, like that, like this, and like that. And then we're going to take our piece D, and we're going to cut diagonal just one time, okay? All right, and it's gonna go like about right there. Okay, and then like that, like that, and like that. Obviously it looks wonky right now, but by the time we trim it down to the size that is called for, it's gonna look okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna not sew this section yet, I'm gonna wait and I'm just gonna sew these guys together, this middle and this part, and then we'll join this little one, in a this one in a little bit. So I'm gonna sew this. And then take this piece. And with this, I'm also gonna press open because even though the instruction in the book said to press to the side, I'm pressing open because again, it's a small block and it there's no room for pressing to the side so this is done like that and i'm going to join the middle piece like i said this block only requires one step you might have to cut a few pieces of uh, fabric but just one step i'm going to sew this to this piece right here and put it like that so this is look. This is what it's looking like so far. I'm gonna put it right here so y'all can see it. It's looking like that so far. And then the third row is gonna be like this. They're all done. So what I'm gonna do is just piss, piece this to this and then piece this right here to this one and then we'll do the next step with the piece that we cut, cut diagonal earlier and then we'll sew that part and then we're done and all we have to do is trim and it's all good to go and then I'm gonna sew the last piece I'm gonna trim this little thread when I'm all done before I press So I'm just gonna trim up my little thread. I'm gonna press open with my finger, just like so. This is what we're looking like right now. It looks a little wonky. I'm gonna give, a little, give it a little bit of heat and I will sew the last part to it. So this is what it's looking like all nice and pressed. And now we're going to sew that uh, deep piece to the ends. Okay, where the uh, pink is, is where I'm going to sew this piece, like that. It's starting to take shape. Let's see what happens when we're done. This one, I don't really have to fold the piece to get the middle. I'm just going to eyeball it and sew. So this is what the backside is looking like right now. The reason why I didn't trim this dog ear looking pieces off is because I wanted to use this corners as my guide. So I will um, make sure that I have that pointy 
um, part of the diagonal um, deep piece that were cut in half. So I can use it as a guide to get the, uh, to be more accurate. So now this is what I'm going to do is trim them before I um, press. And then I will trim to get the size that I need. I hope that I'm making sense. <laughs> now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of heat and I will um, trim it. And then the block number 20 is completely done, okay? This is what my block is looking like right now. It is oversized, yes. And I'm going to trim it down to the size that requires. I thought I used my Tula Pink ruler to match the occasion since this is Tula Pink fabric. I'm just having fun over here. Can y'all tell? I'm going to center right there. And I have this line in the middle right on to the seam. And then I'm going to trim. Okay. I have it right there. I'm just going to trim. And I'm going to trim across. Move my mat and trim. Just like that. There is not that much room. This is block number 20. This is what it's looking like. And I'm going to show you the rest of my block, what they are all looking like. So you can kind of see where my, um, my mind was going with this. Hi there. So I am done with block number 19 and 20. And this are my blocks. So this is number 19. It wants you to make four of, I kind of did, um, two of this the same, one different. So I can't, I put this to the end. So it gives it a little bit of like, you know, visualization. It uh, plays with your eyes a little bit. And then this one right here, I made these three different because on block number 16, we're going to do it. We're going to put alternate blocks. So I have the pink one, the blue one, the pink one, and the blue one. And this right here, this right here is going to go in a different area of the quilt. So that's why I was kind of thinking ahead. I was looking at where everything is going to go. Let me show you in the quilt where it's going to go. So block number 16, ouch. Block number 16, you see this right here? Mine, I made it blue. This right here, mine was pink the pink color and then so I alternate the colors and then the last four which I made pink is going to go that fourth one that I made different will go right there see how it's kind of see how it's kind of lost right there I didn't want mine to be lost I want it to be seen without taking over it there in the quilt is like muted and I didn't want that because I feel like I work hard enough on this, making these thousands of blocks. And I want my blocks to speak for themselves with um, when appropriate to be loud, when appropriate to be quiet, but still be seen. So that's why I made this one, this color. See, it's, it's like, it's gonna go in that spot where it's muted. Um, if you are making this quilt and you're not this far along, um, so once after you made your larger blocks, which is these right here, these big ones, start going back and looking at this page. This page is page 38. Go back and look at this page when you and, and start tightening up your colors because if you're not paying attention to what your blocks are and then you're just making the blocks as you go, if you're like me and you are like type A personality, you're gonna wanna be in control of this quilt. And your color choices so that's what I have done the minute we start getting smaller and smaller in our blocks I started looking at where um, what my blocks are looking like and the color that I've chosen and where I want the smaller blocks to go and what I want it to look like within the quilt so that's what I did and that's why I'm showing you now how I um, I'm showing you my process so hopefully this will help somebody so <laughs> you know hopefully i'm not talking to myself and this is helping someone out there 
And if, it, if this is helping you and you like what I'm doing, please feel free to help me out and subscribe down below and share this video, okay? Now, you know what I always said? I have completed my blocks and the next step is assembling the quilt. And I hope you join me doing that. And with that being said, I will love to see you on my next video. You have a great day. Bye.